like any massive capital enterprise, railroads will require some help and incentives. In the early days of Texas, during its early statehood period, cities and counties oftentimes tried to incentivize uh, railroad companies to build and to connect their communities. Um, but state land grants and loans begin to be offered during the Reconstruction period. Well, then they're outlawed until they're once again renewed after 1869 with the uh, Constitution of 1876. The Constitution of 1876 allows the state of Texas to give away an estimated 36 million acres of land to railroad concerns. This land will then be used to capitalize the construction of railroads. In the 1870s, tracks are being laid. We talked about that earlier. And the first real track that starts to connect a big swath of the country of Texas is the Houston and Texas Central Railroad, which goes all the way from Houston to Corsicana, then up through Dallas to the Red River. There, it connects with the Missouri, Kansas, and Texas Railroad coming out of Kansas City uh, and connecting through the town of Denison in 1872. So now, all of a sudden, we have the first unbroken train trip from Houston to Kansas City. By 1879, about 2,500 miles of track was laid. But again, it's the 1880s where it really starts to take off. 6,000 more miles of track are laid during this decade. The peak years are actually about 1881, 1882, and 1887. That's when the real building boom takes off. Uh, by the end of that decade, there's two transcontinental railroad routes across Texas. One, by and large, approximates, um, say, I-20 today. Uh, the other approximates I-10. So you have a northern route and a southern route. Uh, outsiders, outside railroad operators, begin to come in and buy Texas lines and expand them. One of the guys that's absolutely the best at this, Jay Gould. Jay Gould is also the guy that threatened Jefferson. <laughs> so Jay Gould, famous in American history for being a very clever railroad man, also has his hand in the Texas railroad scene. Well, railroads need fuel. And so railroads often planted towns where they could have water stops, places for their crews to swap out, things like that. So now all of a sudden we have a new spacing of communities across Texas. Railroads also start to look for resources that can help fuel the railroad. In particular, they look for coal. And as you will discover later, they find some. Well, the vast majority of Texas railroads spread out across East Texas because that's where the people are. And this spreading out and connecting by rail of all these communities in East Texas spurs industrial development. All sorts of new industries really get a boost or, or even made possible because the railroad is in place. In turn, industry and connectivity attracts population. During the 1880s into the 1890s, West Texas is crossed by rails, but it's still not fully accessible out in its hinter regions by rail. It's really an East Texas phenomenon. 